Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He's making me to lie down in green pastures. He leading me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leading me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. shall ascend into the hill of the Lord or who shall stand in his holy place he that had clean hands and a pure heart who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully he shall receive the blessings from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation this is the generation of them that seek him Seek thy face, O Jacob. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, the everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? Lord strong and mighty, Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, the everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. Unto thee, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed, let not mine enemies fight over me. Yea, let none that wait on thee be ashamed. Let them be ashamed with transgress without cause. Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy path. Lead me thy truth. Teach me. For thou art the God of my salvation. On thee I will wait all the day. Learn, O Lord, thy tender mercies and thy loving kindness. For they have been ever of old. Remember not the sins of my youth, nor of my transgressions. According to thy mercy, remember thou me for thy goodness sake, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore will he keep sinners in the way. The meek will he be guided in judgment. The meek will teach, will he teach his way. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth such as keep his commandments of covenant and his testimonies. For thy name's sake, O Lord, pardon my iniquities, for it is great. What man is he that feareth the Lord? He shall, him shall he teach in the way that he shall choose. His soul shall dwell at ease. His seed shall inherit the earth. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. He will show them his covenant. My eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he shall pluck my feet out of the net. Turn thee unto me and have mercy upon me, for I am desolate and afflicted. The troubles of my heart are enlarged, so bring thou me out of my distresses. Look upon my affliction and my pain and forgive all my sins. Consider it. My enemies, for they are many, and they hate me with cruel hatred. 
O keep my soul and deliver me. Let me not be ashamed, for I put my trust in thee. Let iniquity or integrity, integrity, uprightness preserve me, for I wait on thee. Remember of Israel, O God, out of all his troubles. Judge me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity. I have trusted also in the Lord. Therefore, I shall not slide. Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my reins and my heart. But I know the kindness is before my eyes, and I have walked in the truth. I have not sat with vain persons, neither will I go with dissembers. I have hated the congregation of evil doers and will not sit with the wicked. I will wash my hands in innocence. So will I compass thine altar, O Lord, that I may publish with the voice of thanksgiving. Tell of thy, all thy wondrous works. Lord, I have loved the habitations of thy house. Place for thine honor blood. Gather not my soul with sinners, nor my life with bloody men. In whose hands is mischief? Their right hand is full of bribes. But as for me, I will walk in my integrity. Redeem me and be merciful unto me. My foot standeth in an evil place. In the congregation will I bless the Lord. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, yeah. and his truth endureth to all generations. I will sing of mercy and judgment. Unto thee, O Lord, will I sing. I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. Oh, when wilt thou come unto me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. I will set no wicked thing before me, before my eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not be to me. Your forward heart shall depart from me. I will not know of a wicked person. Whosoever privily slandereth his neighbor, him cut off. My eyes shall be upon, be upon the faithful of the land. That they may dwell with me. He that walketh in a perfect way, he shall serve me. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and let my cry come upon thee. Hide not thy face from me in the day when I am in trouble. Incline thy ear unto me in the day when I call answer me speedily. For my days are consumed like smoke, and my bones are burned as of earth. My heart is smitten and withereth like grass, so that I forget to eat my bread by reason of the voice of my groaning. My bones cleave to my skin, and I am like a pelican of the wilderness, and I am like an owl in the desert. I watch and am like a sparrow alone upon my house. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thy iniquities, and healing 
all thy diseases. Who redeemeth thy face from destruction? Who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies? Who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles? The Lord executed righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, plenteous in mercy. He will not always strive, neither will he keep his anger forever. He has not dwelt with us after our sins, nor remembered or rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy towards them that fear him.
Well, let the church say amen. amen. Can we give God a praise? I know that they got the cause of CDC and behind those masks. But I believe there are some powerful saints of God in this room that understand that there's another soldier going home. But when we celebrate life like God wants us to, we're supposed to be crying when they come and rejoice when they leave out. Oh my God. So can we give God the praise that's through his name? He was a soldier in the army of the Lord. I don't know how to sing that song, but he was a soldier in the army of the Lord. And we can say to him, servant, well done. Come on, let's give God the praise in this house. Oh my God, my God, my God. I don't think we can change the author of the world any different, any different. He won't do the praise and rejoice and give God the glory because he's better off right now. Somebody else shout, yes he is, yes he is. Oh my God, no more sickness, no more pain, no more going to the doctor. Oh my God, 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 come on here. I can see the power of God. Why don't we in this house? Oh, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Amen, we do honor the Lord. I apologize. We do honor the Lord. We do honor the Lord and thank God for all of our leaders, especially our bishop. Thank God for these men and women of God and thank God for this family. Amen. We appreciate the Lord. The family has laid out uh, a program uh, for us to go by today and we just want to honor the family. We honor them. I know that many of you have stopped by to just want to, you know, give you love. And we are, we are, we know we're still social distancing, try as much as we possibly can for those who, amen, who are who have been vaccinated and all this stuff, but amen, let's kind of limit our hugs and all that stuff, amen, praise the Lord, and and, and, and you know, y'all know how to do it, praise God, and so let, but we want to have church this morning, can we have church this morning, celebrating the life of big J.C. Oliver, can we celebrate his life, can we celebrate his life, I, I, I know, I know, I know you talking about Bishop but can we celebrate his life? Amen, amen. Next on program, our Bishop, Bishop Arthur Fulton. Let's receive him and thank God for Bishop Fulton. And let's go to follow the program thereafter. Jesus, 
that you who uphold all things by the word of your power, that you uphold every family member, every person, every loved one, every friend. And even at this time of sorrow, Lord, we understand that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Yeah. Oh God, so we thank you for your strength. I praise you. We thank you for your joy. Oh, glory to God. For the joy of the Lord is our strength. We thank you for the joy that we, we have today. Now, bless us upon everything that goes forth today. In your name, we give you glory. We give you honor. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. To the elders of this house and to all the clergymen on staff and in the place, I give you the New Testament scripture coming from the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 5, start at verse 1. All right. If all hearts are prepared, hear the word of God. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle was dissolved. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We have a building of God, uh -huh. a house not made with hands, yes, eternal in heaven. Yes, For in this we groan, mm -hmm. honestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. Mm -hmm. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. Yes, For we that are in this tabernacle, do groan, oh, yeah. being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but closed upon, oh, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now he that hath wrought us for the self same thing is God, yes. who also has given unto us the honest of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Therefore we are always confident, knowing that while we are at home in the body. Well, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and will rather be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. First time reason, wherefore we labor, that whether present or absent, we may be accepted 
of him. May God have a blessing to the hearers and doers of his word.
Glory to God, we thank God for thee. And I'm to do reflections concerning Deacon J.C. Oliver. It looks as if I have known him all of my life. <laughs> but I knew that I got acquainted with the Oliver family when we came here many, many years ago and established United Holiness Church. Later on, they became part of United Holiness Church. When I think of Deacon Oliver, and I was looking at some of the uh, positions that he held. He was an entrepreneur. He was a working man. Glory to God. He was a man that, the way I knew him, I don't know how you, I don't know how you knew him. Glory to God. But he was a man that had few, wor few words, but he said a lot. I can ever, cannot ever, ever, ever see him angry. I said, as I, no, I don't, I don't, I wasn't with him all the time, but I thank God his character was above reproach. It's one thing that I can say about Deacon Oliver. He was a true deacon. He was, a, he was one of the pillars of First United Holiness Church. And I, I think it's over 20-some 20, 20 years that he was a faithful deacon here at First United Holiness Church. Glory to God. But it didn't just start. That his, he, he did just start here at First United. Glory to God. Amen. I remember him way, way, way. And I don't remember what year it was. Glory to God. But sin the Sabbath, as I know. And, and this, this was before churches were, uh, you, I, I'm thinking before it was, but anyway. He was, a, he was a, a plum. A plum. And let me say this to here. Our church have been, our United Holy Church is 40, 40 some years old. I hit for 40. Well, anyway. Our church is a lot is, is old. <laughs> Glory to God. But Deacon, our headquarters church, I'm talking about our headquarters church when it was built there. Glory to God. Deacon Oliver. I don't know whether the last and plum or what, but in a way, let me tell you something. We have not, we have not had to redo the plumbing. Now if they had, they, they ain't told me nothing about it. <laughs> it has you know the minor stuff, the minor stuff, but he and Deacon uh, Deacon uh, Larry, yeah, yeah, that's what it was. Deacon Larry. They put their plum, and we had about 12 or 13 bathrooms upstairs and downstairs. There was a lot of them, but they put them in there. Didn't even have no blueprint to go by the overseer putting his hand on the ground and said, okay, I want one right there. Guess what they followed? They have not been toned up after all of those years. And one of them, well, another thing, another thing that I remember about Deacon Olives and my daughter, Elisa, brought it to my remembrance. We had our crusade. Glory to God. Oh, in Mobile, Alabama. We had our trucks, old, old blue 
uh, blue, blue, whatever we call it, blue. Uh, yeah, that old blue. <laughs> Big blue. Wasn't no new truck, but we had shut, shut, shut all the way to Mobile, Alabama, where we had our tent, put our tent up there. Glory to God. And when we could, and it rained, I mean it rained like flooding. And we we left that folk was stealing. But we sitting up in the in the yard looking at folk was stealing out of it anyway. We got ready to leave. And overseer needed some help. He needed some help to, to help come down. So I wanted to come come down to Mobile, Alabama, and help us take the tent down and drive. Drive. By, back then. You didn't, you, I did not drive no truck across the bridge. In fact, I didn't drive no car across the bridge. I had a feel that God delivered me. But anyway, guess what? Deacon Oliver and his songs. It's a five and a half, a, a, a five and a half, five hundred, five, yes. Hours, five hours and a half there. They drove there. Amen. Amen. And they helped take that tent down. And guess what? They drove. They got in the trucks, old trucks, and drove back to America's Georgia. I thank God for you, Deke. I thank God for your sons. Glory to you. How many were you was there in that? I praise God for you. Amen. So I can say that Deacon Oliver not only was a pillar here at Third uh, Fresh United, glory to God, he was a pillar at all our churches. All our churches, oh, he put the climbing in some of them, glory to God. So today, let us give God a praise for a man that lives a life of thankful Deacon until his death. Go ahead and praise him.
Everybody know me, no, I don't preach long. I don't like long preaching, I don't like long church. You wouldn't have it. I'm not against you. I have been in long church and I'm coming over since starting and I was one of the first ones there in Donaldsonville, Georgia. When he started America's, he had a six-month revival. Every day, every night. Every night. So I ain't scared of church now. I just like wrestling now. said the steps of a good man is all the by the Lord. Y'all want to step a minute? We step, amen, in 71 when I got saved and I met the Olivers in the 70s. And I know it was 73 when we built United. And a lot of people say, how you know? Because I was there from day one. We drove from Donaldsonville, Georgia, up to Montezuma, Georgia, and joined the church the first day. And I still love you, Nana, so you can't, don't say nothing bad about it around me, because I, you know, I still feel it. <laughs> Just like my daughters don't stay with me, you can't stay, at, everybody can't stay there. My mama said there's too many grown folks in there. When you get grown, you know how to take care of house, and then go and get out of there. You got that red head. <laughs> Look, all, these, all of my tears in the spirit. And they were saying, Gloria, say I'm going to play the keyboard. We, you know what? You can't meet a better family yeah. in Montezuma, yeah. Overthaw, wherever they are. Some of them in Warner Rob. But that's what the Bible say about a good man. Now, he shoot his arrow and they go everywhere. <laughs> Amen. Some of them in Virginia now. Isn't that right? So, Mother, you know, you have, if you step with Deacon Knopf, when he started his business, he kept stepping. Yeah. Amen. And then, you know what? If you keep following a good man, you'll find out where to go. Oh. Look at somebody say, keep stepping. <laughs> if you don't stop, you're going to make it to your destination. Oh. Minister Mike. He was there too. All of we wake up in the morning about five o'clock, take off, drive the van, go down whichever church we were building. Yeah. I didn't want no block mason, but I put some up there too. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Even all, all of us, we put them blocks up there, and uh, we did what we had to do. Yeah. You know what? A piece of sand get in your eye, and uh, it won't do much, but you throw a whole handful in there. That's why unity is strength. The devil is trying to tear the church up by getting people mad with one another. And, and, and now, folks, the, the world is something else. They don't went back to the balls and the triple X club, and the church folks want to sit at the house. You know, I always been the one that went scared. Let me tell you something, thanks to God. It's time to get back in here and praise the Lord. It's time to get back in here and praise Him. Let's give Him the glory. Folks that not even knowing nothing about no Jesus is in, the, in their places. It's time to keep stepping. Say keep stepping. If you keep stepping, you're going to get back the way you're supposed to be. If you keep stepping, the church is going to come. This is our greatest hour. In the midst of tribulations and trials. God is changing things. And he said he's shaking things up until all that he shakes and can't shake out no more. He said it'll remain. Are you part of the remain? Just keep stepping. And that's, that's the last word I want to leave with you. Keep stepping. <laughs>
giving honor to the Honorable Bishop Fulton, sent man of this house, Elder Michael Coley, their families, to Mother Snipes, woman of God, mother indeed, mother in Zion, to Bishop Wallace, my brother and friend in the Lord, and to all of the extreme ministers of the gospel, Elder Wilkinson, and all of those that I don't know your name, but God bless you. We honor you in your respective places. I am honored to be here, to be among such a great people. I came into United Holiness Church in 1976, the end of 1976. The church was three years old. And I've come to know so many people. I was talking with my wife the other night. I'm just going to take a minute and we're going to get to what we're going to say. I was talking to my wife and I said, it's people that I would probably have never met had I not connected with United Holiness Church. People that became my family. And everywhere I went or was sent in the body, people loved us. People saw about us. People made us feel like kings and queens. And the Oliver's family is one of those people, some of those people. We was assigned to pastor First United Holiness Church in 1995. We've had Sundays up there before. We would come on the fourth Sunday and minister, and people just loved us. But in 1995, Bishop Oliver Fulton sent us to pastor the church here in Montezuma, Georgia. And the Oliver family, not saying nobody else didn't love us, but they just have a way with people. They make you feel like somebody. They make your head swell a little bit too. <laughs> you know. They took to us and we stayed in their homes. And I'm going to say this about Deacon Oliver. He said what he meant. And he meant what he said. You can bank on it. If he wasn't going to do a thing, okay, okay, and if he was going to do it, he was going to do it, and he was going to do it right. I love him, I appreciate him. He took the fishing one time, him and we used to call him Junior Deacon Oliver, he ain't no Junior no more, but they took the fishing one time and he was just fishing and fishing and wasn't nothing happening for me. And he looked back at me and said, you ain't holding your mouth right. <laughs> so while I was trying to get my mouth right, trying to figure out what was the right way to hold my mouth, he was ready to catch his feet. <laughs> but they fed me when we got home. I didn't catch them. I didn't care. No, I don't even know if I even got a bite. They fed me when I got home. And his wife had made some of that good old cornbread with corn in it. Man, let me tell you, I remember those days. And I, I am just grateful. I'm so thankful for having met the Oliver family. And I feel like a part of the family. Amen. My children were small when we came up here. They were actually teenagers. Amen. And the, the, the Oliver family took my children. They are their kids and took them to the fair and did different things with them. That they probably wouldn't have gotten on with me. Because <laughs> when I left Duffco World, I said I wasn't going to another club. I'm not going to another club, and I didn't. Go to another club, and, I didn't. <laughs> and they missed out on a lot of good stuff. And had it not been for y'all, they wouldn't have been there. So I want to thank you for that. But I am so grateful to be here. And let me leave this with you in my closing. I would like to say I thank God for this opportunity to speak to you again. It's been a long time. Last time I was up here, I was up here for your vow renewal. And I stood with the Honorable Elder Coley. He and I did it together. I'm grateful for that. I'll never forget that. I'd like to say this, that death has not won. Our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, went into the region of death, took the sting out of it, and rendered death unable to hold us for eternity. Made a safe passage 
that we can go through and not be held eternally in the grip of death. So I rejoice today with the fact that my brother is gone. And you remember Jesus said, I go away and prepare a place in you in my father's house for many mentions. All I want to say to Deacon Oliver that I meet you at the house. Praise the Lord. Amen. Families also ask that someone else from the other family would like to, to share words. By all means, come at this time. the baby of the family and for a few years it was just him 
and his oldest sister, which was my mom. And she she suffered, and you know, for a long time, and then she finally passed away. And um, when she passed away, the day after the funeral, him and Mama Kate had us all over at the house. And you know, and he said, um, he said, as of today, I'm no more Uncle Jay. I'm Daddy Jay, and I'm Mama Kate. You know, you don't have to biologically have children to be a father or a father figure in their life. And this man here has always been that. My mom, she had seven children, he had eight. But her two brothers, J.C. Oliver and Sam Oliver, made sure that she had what she needed. My dad passed away when I was 10 years old. So they step up, they stepped up to the role of fatherhood to make sure that we were taken care of. And I will always be forever grateful to him for that and to Mama Kate and my sister and brother cousins as well. Thank y'all so much. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on. I, I just, you know, this song, uh, Mario's going to help me to sing it. Because, you know, it's just a song that I love. I lift my hands and toes.
more than anything. The protocol has already been set. Mother, it's, you can rejoice. You can rejoice. Battle is fallen. Victory is won. First Corinthians chapter 13. If I speak with the tongues of men, of mankind, of angels, but do not have love, I have become a noisy gong or a clinking steel. If I have the gift of prophecy and know all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. And if I give away all my possessions to charity, and if I surrender my body so that I may glory, but do not have love, it does me no good. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is, it is not jealous. Love does not brag. It is not arrogant. It does not act disgraceful. It does not seek its own benefit. It is not provoked. It does not keep an account of wrong suffered. It does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices in the truth. It keeps every confidence. It believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. But if there be prophecy or gifts, they will be done away with. If there are tongues, they will cease. If there is knowledge, there is knowledge. It will be done away with. For we know in part, the prophesy in part, but when the perfect comes, partial will be done away with. When I was a child, I, I used to speak as a child, think like a child, reason like a child. When I became a man, I did away with childish things. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face, now I know in part, but then I will know fully, just as also I have been known, been, been fully known. But now faith, hope, and love remain in these three. But the greatest of these is love. If I could use for a few moments to talk to you for a use from a topic, just want to talk to you for a few minutes today. Love conquers all. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. I, I must say that before I get deep into this thing, and I'm not going to be before you long, but this was a man of God. Amen. Amen. And yes, he, he, he had his ways, and we all have our ways. Some of them Amen, my God, we don't even want to mention about. Amen. Amen. But when you have somebody that that is not uh, just a person that just goes along with the crowd, just because you say something, that doesn't mean that it's the right thing to say or to do, but amen, you get another opinion, and he had an opinion, and he voiced his opinion. Amen, church. We need more people like that instead of just yes people. Leadership don't want people around them at all way. Yes, yes, yes. You right, you right, Pastor. You right, you, you right. They need somebody who will challenge you. Amen. So, so, so Deacon JC, amen, he, he would challenge. If he didn't think it was, amen. And I can appreciate that. As a leader, you can appreciate that. But those who did just throw rocks and hide their hand. Amen. That's another sermon right there. Amen. But, uh, and he loved these mother, Mother Harris, I mean, uh, yeah, Mother Harris, and Jesse May, excuse me, the elder candidate. But really, that was his crew. Amen. We just appreciate the Lord for them. Let me get into this thing. We, you know, we are living in a world that uh, is full of hate. 
Y'all come out where say amen. Y'all see it every day. Envy, strife, selfishness, greed, pride, self-righteous folks. There's racial tension in the air. Amen. Talking about civil war. Yeah. Amen. If certain people don't get back in office and all this kind of stuff. Right. We have a generation of young people that have no regard for life. Yeah. Right. Amen. They have pulled out. Amen. They pulled out uh, the thing that they think that they watch these video games and they, amen, they think that, you know, that they're going to get another life. They take somebody out. Amen, with a gun, and they feel like they're big and bad. This is the generation we are living in. Amen. Paul put it like this in 2 Timothy 3. He said, but realize this, that in the last days, difficult times will come. For people will be lovers of selves, lovers of money, boastful, arrogant, slanderers. This will be the parents. Oh, my God, I can stay there for a while. 12 and 13-year-olds telling mom and daddy what they ain't going to do. Amen. I, I, I can't do nothing with him. I don't know what I'm, I can't do nothing with him. I tell you what you can do. You can take the right out of fellowship and put it on the seat of intellect and drive that foolishness right out of it. Don't talk about standing in a corner talking about some time out. That don't work, praise the Lord. My grandmama got a sugar berry switch and she put something on me. And I think J, think of JC didn't, uh, I, I went and said, yeah, he didn't, he didn't play. We are ungrateful people, unholy, unloving, irreconcilable, amen, malicious, gossips, and, and without self-control, brutal, haters of good, treacherous, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Yes, sir. Holding to a form of God. Now I'm talking about church folk. But deny the power thereof. Yeah. Amen. So, so you see, love, love in, in itself, when it comes from God, can conquer and overcome difficulties and differences and disagreements and disappointments in this life. Yes, sir. We need more examples of true love in our world today. I thank God for Sister Hetty and, and Deacon Oliver, amen, because they show unconditional love for each other. You talk about 64 years of marriage. Let me tell you that they had to have some heated fellowship. Uh, Y'all might say, man, I, I, if anybody been married long enough, know no, that they didn't have no, oh, baby, honey, pie, sugar, pie. They had some moments. Yes, sir. Amen. They had some moments where, hey, man, my God, she could have ate him up and he could have ate her up, but hey, man, but they stuck together because they had unconditional love. So I'm talking about love conquers all. Yes. They were able to hang in now, amen, and I remember they, amen, my God, their 50th wedding anniversary, and all these different things, and 60 something years. Good wow. God Almighty, Bishop Folk won't marry me on 64 minutes, they are talking about getting a divorce. Wow. But that's, a, that's something within itself, to be married for 60 See, that had to be from my son. That had to be love. That, that had to be love. That, that, that had to be unconditional love. That had to be a time when she wanted to go and he, he probably wanted to go. But, but they said, I, I love you, baby. I made my vows to you. Amen. When I made my vows to you, amen, my God, I'm going to stick with you through thick and thin. Ah, yeah, my God. Y'all ain't like See, love conquers all. Love conquers Oh, give me, give me a few more minutes. Look on the J man, my God. So he loved his family unconditionally. No matter what happened to them, no matter which way they went, come on now. He still loved his family. He was there for them. Amen. They had always been made, made right decisions. Willow told me about some things. Amen. They did some things that. <laughs> come on, y'all talk. Talk about it, Pastor. He still loves. Uh -huh. <laughs> love conquers all. Love, love, love conquers all. He still loves them. Unconditionally. She loved him, mother. Loved this man. In the good times. She loved him in the bad times. In the lead. And when they had it going on. 
in health as you stuck with it in sin. You can close the book right there. Come on, somebody. That's love. When 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 he went down, she was right there. That's unconditional love. She didn't, she didn't push him out somewhere. Amen, my God. She, she showed this man the love that he showed her all these years. She, mother, that's why I said, you can go ahead and rejoice. You pay. Come on, my. Y'all talk to me. Amen. When you stuck there, you hung in there. When there were times when you knew he was tired, he was hurting, and he was painful, and there was nothing you could do about it, but you could just pray. And that's all you did was pray because you loved him. Love conquers all. Love will conquer anything. Amen. Amen. You can all felt this love of God. And, amen. And, and embraced it. He felt God's love on his life. And, and that love, this love, this love that I'm talking about, it, it penetrates the heart. Come on, call it. It penetrates the heart. And, and Deacon Oliver felt the love of God when he heard the word being preached. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes him should not perish but have everlasting life and come as you are and, and he embraced the love of God the Bible says to as many as received him that them gave him power to become the sons of God amen his love reassures us that we know that all things are working together for the good amen somebody shall love love, love conquers help you get through the moments when when it seems like I can't make it but I know that God loves me so much they're going to look out for me some kind of way family it's going to be alright because God loves you and he's going to get you through it we've been made to do it for a night but sure coming in the morning God say I love you my love is unconditional I love it and it's all and I'll be there for you somebody shout hallelujah for while we were yet still helpless, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For one who rather hardly died for a righteous person. Amen. Through perhaps, though perhaps, for a good person, someone even dare to die. But God demonstrated and committed his love. He demonstrated and committed his love towards us. In that while we were yet sinners, while we were yet drinking liquor, while we were yet doing our thing, while we were yet cussing it like a sailor, God loved us. When we were, amen, cheating, getting a bag of nachos, and I'm not talking about no chips, I'm talking about that woman that's not yours, or that man that's not yours, but he loved us unconditionally. He loved us in spite of, oh my God. And so now, now he said, he said Christ died for us. We sing that song, Love Lifted Me. Yeah. When nothing else could happen. Right. Somebody shall love lifted me. Oh my God. When I, when I was doing my thing and I thought I was big and bad enough. Come on now. I got a joint in my mouth. <laughs> Tell me some bad stuff. God still love me. When you were cheating on your taxes, God still love me. Jesus. 
cross. He loved us so much that he allowed himself to go to the cross of Calvary. Amen. My God, they beat him all night long. It was love. Somebody thought that was love. They beat him. They put a crown of thorns on his head. That was love because he knew it. He knew that love was going to conquer all. Conquer all of my sins. All of my mess ups. All of my hiccups. All of my disappointments. All the things that I did. I thank God that love conquers all. And Jesus stayed on that cross. He could have came down. But love kept him on the cross. Love kept him on the cross. Love. He said I got 12,000 angels of angels at my belly call. But love. I knew that I loved them. says and then it will come about the saying that is written there's a death has been swallowed up in victory well death is your victory well great oh death is your sting sting of death is sin and the power of sin is the law but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ love drove him to the cross love nailed him they allowed him to nail him to the cross. When he died, the Bible says, had they known, they never would have crucified him. But his love lifted me when nothing else could help. He died. They didn't kill him. He gave up the cross. Laid his head over lock his shoulder. Three days later, just three days later, he got up with all power. Blood lifted me when nothing else could help. Blood lifted me. Blood lifted me. Love will lift you in the back of your moments. Love will lift you. Your love for your papa, your daddy, amen, your husband, your uncle. Your love will lift you. The love you have for him. It will be forever in your heart. He may be gone in body, but the love it will still be in your heart. Because his love that Jesus did on that cross is still in my heart. God bless you today. Hallelujah. And we love God. Love.
Amen. Love lifted me. I have a resolution for the family, but I, I cannot stand here and, and act as if I don't know this family. Because back in the 70s, when overseas sent us here on White Line Street, that was the old United Holiness Church, the Oliver family took us in. And I tell you, as quiet as his wife is, she could cook some of the best cream corn fried chicken. And she fed my children, and I had a bunch of them. They'd take us to their house, and she they would feed us. They just was so good people. The resolution says to the family of J.C. Oliver, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. On behalf of Zion Church of Fredericksburg, we send our love and prayers as you celebrate the life that God's son, J.C. Oliver, lived. To Deacon Willie, Elder Cornelia, Leah, and family, our hearts go out to you during this time of bereavement. Let's not grieve without hope, for we know that a great day is coming, and we will be rejoicing as all of God's children will gather together and inherit the joys of heaven. It is a very difficult period in your life, and we know that no words can heal your broken heart. We know that God has taken Brother J.C. hand and crossed him from this world into God's eternal care and keeping. In time like these, encourage yourselves in the Lord and rely upon the word of God for strength, comfort, and peace. We have his assurance that the ultimate end is not death, but eternal life. Be assured that we are holding the family in prayer and stand ready to assist you in any way we can. Therefore, on behalf of the members of Zion Church of Fredericksburg, we offer this letter as an expression of our deepest love and concern for Deacon Willie, Elder Cornelius, Oliver, and family. May God be your refuge and strength, a very present help in time of bereavement. In his service, Troy T. Dixon, psych pastor, Zion Church of Fredericksburg, Virginia. A resolution from the Antioch Orthodox Primitive Baptist Church. And as much as J.C. Oliver is a relative of Elder Dr. Eugene Clinton, pastor and faithful member of Antioch Zion Orthodox Primitive Baptist Church, we feel it's proper to submit this resolution. Whereas, it is with sad feelings and profound sorrow that we record his passing. And whereas his removal from our midst is indeed a great loss to the family and to us as well. We most humbly submit to the master's will and we extend to you the family members and friends our heartfelt sympathy. We commend you to ever lean upon the everlasting arm of Jesus, who can and will heal our sorrows, humbly submitted, members and friends of Antioch Zion Orthodox Primitive Baptist Church, Elder Dr. Eugene Clinton is the pastor. Under the direction of Ms. Denise West and her brother, Mr. Robert Eric West, we would like to present these memorial plaques, and the plaques are entitled, The Broken Chain. We little knew that morning God was going to call your name, 
in life we love you dearly in death we do the same it broke our hearts to lose you you did not go alone for part of us went with you the day god called you home you left beautiful memories your love is still our guide and though we cannot see you you're always at our side our family chain is broken and nothing seems the same but as god calls us one by one the chain will lead you again in love and memory of mr jc oliver Sunrise, October 3rd, 1938. Sunset, June 28th, 2021. At this time, we would like to present the frames to his wife, his children, and his goddaughter. We ask that you please acknowledge yourselves by raising your hand. Oh, ye gates, lift up your head, and the King of glory will come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord thy God, the King of hosts. He is the King of glory. I say to the family today, lift up your head and allow the King of glory to come in. It is so good today to see that we are gathering back in the church. It's been over 16 months since I have attended a funeral on the inside of the building. Just let me know that a change is on the way. I want to say to family today, you may be sorry for now, but a change is on the way. Somebody will say things will never be the same again. It's not supposed to be. Things are supposed to change. But hold on to God's unchanging hand. On behalf of Ariel and the Deeds, West, our president and vice president, myself as the chaplain for the West Mortuary and the entire mortuary staff, we want to say thank you today for entrusting your loved one in our care. We want to say thank you. We love you. And we are not only here for you on this day, but we're here for you in the days to come. Just give us a call. We're only a phone call away. God bless you all, and we love you all. And we had a granddaughter to come forward. Please help us pass not the loud. Just the loud on this side.
soldier. Well done. Mm. Go home to be with the Lord. If I rejoice and really, really right now. Let's close out thanking God for everything that God has done for us through this man of God. Amen. Father in heaven, it is from you whom we come. Yes. And unto you our spirits return. Yes. You are our dwelling place. So we place our trust in you. Mm. Lift our eyes from the shadows of this earth and help us to see the light of eternity in you today. Mm. In Jesus' name. In Jesus. We pray. For as much as it please Almighty God to take out of this world the soul of Deacon J.C. Oliver, we therefore commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, looking for that blessed hope when the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort you one another with these words. Amen. Amen. Bishop Fulton. Heavenly Father, again we come to you thanking you for all your goodness and your mercy and your blessings wherever where you have blessed us. We thank you that wherever we go, you are there. We're never alone. Father, we just thank you right now for how you will continue to bless this family. Yes. Not only this family, uh, not only the uh, paternal family, but the church family, friends, and all of us, and you will keep us, uh, keep our hearts and minds in peace, yes. and keep us in solace as we look to you. We look to you, for they that look to you are lightened, and their faces will never be ashamed. In Jesus' name we pray. Bishop. Let's look to the Lord and be dismissed. Now may the grace of God the Father Almighty, the love of the one who conquers all and who loves us, the peace, the power, and the presence of the very Holy Ghost, rest, rule, and abide with you now, henceforth, and forevermore. All the people of God said together, amen. 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 And this kind of family wants to sing a song. Amen. If you want to know mm. where I'm going, bless him, bless him, bless him. where I'm going soon, <laughs> if anybody asks you where I'm going, where
like to thank co-founder tonight, Fulton, all these men and women of God, First United Church, each of you for taking out of your busy Friday morning to help come celebrate the home going of that beloved. And I hope that when your time comes, that God would be as nice as you should have been doing today. On behalf of our president, Mr. Robert Ear Wiss, our vice president, Ms. Devin Lee Wiss, our chaplain, Frank Munch, Pastor Frank Munch, and we, the West March River staff, would like to extend our gratitude for thanking you for entrusting us with your loved one. And I always remember to continue to look to the hill, but come to our help, all of our help do come from the Lord. So with the condition of it's getting hot, yeah. family been gone a long time, yeah. and Ms. Oliver said they got some cornbread down the road. Yes, and cornbread too. Please, uh, we do. get the family back into the limousine so we can get them back into the house.